Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We begin on this election day with live pictures from Sky 4 in Ann Arbor, where people are lining up, been lining up for hours to cast ballots today. Such important issues up and down the ballot decision day in Metro Detroit and all across the United States. That's right, and right now we are three hours away from polls closing all across the state, except for just a small little sliver of the UP. That's because they're on a central time zone there. So months of campaigning and millions and millions of dollars spent, and it all comes down to what happens today and tonight. So let's go through some of the major races and issues voters are deciding. We start, of course, with the race at the top of your ballot for governor, Democratic incumbent Gretchen Whitmer, going up against the Republican challenger, Tudor Dixon. And then Michigan voters have a big decision of Proposal 3. That would put a woman's right to an abortion and use of contraceptives in the state constitution. The race for attorney general has been closely watched all over the country. Incumbent Democrat Dana Nessel in a heated race with the Republican challenger Matt DiPerno. And Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson is running for re-election as the state's top election official. She's being challenged by former community college instructor Christina Caramo. Caramo is a 2020 presidential election denier and is endorsed by former President Trump. All coming with very strong turnout so far. More than 1.7 million absentee ballots have already been turned in. Same day registrations we are watching highest right now in college towns. Ann Arbor and East Lansing, both campuses, all of it happening as the Justice Department is monitoring polls in Detroit, Pontiac, and Southfield. And we have reporters covering multiple angles tonight. Priya Mann is checking in with voters, and Hank Winchester is tracking potential issues at the polls. Start things off, though, in the 5 o'clock hour with Mara McDonald, who is live after months and months of campaigning and spending, <laughs> of course. Uh, we've hit the home stretch, Mara. <laughs> Hi, Devin, we sure have. And I want to remind everybody of one thing. You're going to see behind me a line here at the Detroit City Clerk's Office to drop off absentee ballots. We have shattered records in Michigan as far as absentee ballots requested and absentee ballots returned. It means we have a lot to count tonight, which means we're probably not going to know by 11 any definitive numbers. Now, that said, I do think we're going to see some hard numbers out of one Metro Detroit County. I'll explain in a minute. Take a look. The top of the ticket on the move today, Tudor Dixon voting in Norton Shores. I think we left everything on the field. We did as much as we possibly could, talked to everybody across the state that we could. I feel good about today. Governor Whitmer started off in Lansing this morning for a canvas kickoff and then made her way to Detroit to get out the vote. I've seen some early reports that it's looking good. We've got long lines. I was in East Lansing this morning with Congresswoman Slotkin. Um, I was on MSU's campus yesterday, G, uh, Grand Valley's campus earlier this week in U of M. I mean, we're seeing the enthusiasm, and so it's good, but we're not going to rest until the polls close tonight. We have the possibility of breaking a midterm voting record here in Michigan. We've already broken the record for absentees in a midterm. It all depends on the ballot box voters today. Back here live, as you can see behind me, we've got a line here at the Detroit City Clerk's Office to hand off those absentee ballots. And let's talk about numbers. I expect we're not going to have much out of Wayne and Macomb by 11 o'clock tonight. I do think we're going to have some hard numbers out of Oakland County uh, if that remains true to form. That is typically what happens here. Be interesting, Devin and Kimberly, to watch those margins out of Oakland tonight. We're live in the News Center. I'm Mara McDonald. Local four. So right. All right, Mara, stand by. Of course, we'll be coming back to you throughout uh, the evening. Now, with three hours to go before the polls close, we are keeping a close eye on any potential trouble for voters. That's right. And so far, we've only seen minor issues for a few folks trying to cast their ballots. Consumer investigator Hank Winchester is live at Huntington Place, where votes will be counted tonight. So, uh, Hank, what are you hearing so far? Hey. And Kimberly, Devin, let's get to the good news right now. And that's the vote total, the number of absentee ballots that have already been counted here in the Huntington Place in downtown Detroit. These are votes from Detroiters. And so far, 63,000 have been counted. In fact, they are hopeful 
that they're going to get this all wrapped up by the end of this shift, which is midnight. In fact, they're even optimistic it could be before midnight, but we've heard that in years past, as you've heard, so we're going to stay here, keep an eye on it. Now, when it comes to problems around the city, uh, all over Metro Detroit. We've actually heard of only a few technical glitches uh, taking place at different polling locations. For the most part, it sounds like the people who've wanted to vote have been able to. But take a look at some video. There was an issue, a technical problem at Osborne High School earlier in the city of Detroit, but we are told that crews got there as quickly as possible, worked it out, and those who were told they could not vote were then brought back in to cast their ballot. Take a listen. There was a discrepancy um, as if we had already um, voted already through an absentee, which we've never requested for one. Okay. And so basically it took about 10 minutes and so they got it resolved and so we voted. Now, if you have any issues voting this evening, remember you have an opportunity to vote until 8 o'clock tonight. But if you encounter any problems at the polls, the Help Me Hank team, we want to hear directly from you. I'm in contact with the Secretary of State and leaders in every local office to help make sure that if you want to vote, that you have every opportunity to do so. Now, tonight at 6 o'clock, we're going to talk to you about why we're in this particular space. You may flash back to 2020. Remember the area with all the windows? Well, there was a big move, and it involves what happened here a few years ago. We're going to talk uh, about that for you tonight at the top of the hour. For now, we're live here in downtown Detroit. Hank Winchester, help me, Hank. Back to you. Okay, we do remember that, Hank, and thank you so much. We'll be sure to check back in with you if there are any other issues. Devin. Showing you, it's been a busy day at the polls all across Metro Detroit today. In fact, check out this video from Warren. Voters casting their ballots today at the Fitzgerald Recreation Center. We wanted to get a sense of what it's been like and what is motivating people to turn out in these kind of numbers today. Priya Mann has been all over town. She joins us live in Westland with more Priya. Good evening, Devin and Kim. Yeah, we have been crisscrossing uh, Metro Detroit going to Ann Arbor. We're here in Westland. We were in Detroit earlier today, and the crowds really depend on where you're at. Over in Ann Arbor, students on campus at U of M, they're waiting hours to vote. Here in Westland, there's been a steady stream, and in Detroit, why don't we begin there, and we'll start off with a poll chaplain. They're excited to vote. And I think that's the thing that's going to matter. A handful of voters were out early Tuesday morning at Chrysler Elementary near downtown Detroit. You have such a small crowd here today. Why? I'm accustomed to lots of people having to stand in line. She's hopeful more voters will show up after work. This poll chaplain echoing what many are saying as they come to cast their ballot. You can feel the weight of it. That it's important to do this. And I think that's, that's why it's different for me. Everyone motivated for different reasons. I want to reach out to the young voters. That's who is important. Over in Ann Arbor. Only like there when I started, I've been here for maybe like two and a half hours. So yeah, it's gonna, it, it'll take a while, but it's worth it. Students at the University of Michigan waiting hours on campus to vote. What do you think about the turnout here? It's amazing. I love it. This is really honestly inspiring me and honestly makes me more motivated to stay in line to vote. We have a lot of students who are registering the same day here and it's a decent wait, but we hope they'll stick with us. I'm actually at, in the Ford School for Public Policy, so uh, voting is very important. I think that everyone needs to make their voice heard. This excited first time voter just turned 18. I always thought it was like so like grown up of my parents to vote and I'm super excited that like now it's my turn to like be grown up and like vote. Yeah, certainly an excited first time voter there. Check out the parking lot here at Johnson Upper Elementary School. That's where we're live in Westland tonight. A uh, pretty steady stream here. At some points, it's been more packed than others. A uh, lot of folks coming in with their children voting here. Two precincts or uh, you can vote here at Johnson Upper Elementary School. Uh, and again, you know, talking to voters, getting their sense of what's motivating them really depends on where you're at. Uh, coming up at six o'clock, we're going to be talking to a 92 year old voter who has been walking to her polling station for the last 30 years. So a lot of dedicated voters out here, all of them making their voices heard. Reporting live in Westland, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. I can't wait to hear your story at 6. Priya, we appreciate that. There's been some dedication yeah. to see the folks that are standing and we've heard two hour lines in some cases to register to vote today. Yeah. So that's that's it. That's, the little, yep, that's what it takes. Yeah. Yep. All right, well, our coverage of the election is just getting started. We've uh, got you covered all night long here. Christy McDonald and I will be hosting wall-to-wall -wall coverage 
starting at 8 p.m. tonight on Local 4 Plus. We've got a panel of experts raring to go. We'll be checking in with the local clerks all over the, the area to get a real sense of how the count is going and, of course, relying on our staff of reporters, uh, which are spread out far and wide tonight, getting underway at 8 on Local 4 Plus. And click on Detroit.com is ready to go uh, with up to the minute results as they come in tonight. All of the major races are going to be right on the home page and they'll also be front and center on click on Detroit on the app. In other news tonight, it looks as if several apartments were destroyed or damaged in a fire in Pontiac. This afternoon, Sky 4 was over the Arbor View Apartments on Leonard Lane near M59 and Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. We don't know how the fire started, but it did appear to spread. We have calls out to investigators to find out more about what happened and if anyone was hurt. Now to the weather, sun beginning to set on what has been a beautiful election day. There's a live look at from our uh, sky cam in Ann Arbor. Just beautiful for this time of year. Temperatures getting warmer, in fact, as we make our way through the week. So let's get over to Kim Adams in our first look at 4-1 forecast. Hi, Kim. Hi, it has been a really beautiful day with temperatures throughout the day in the upper 40s to uh, low 50s in most spots, but it will start cooling down now. The sun is just about to set here in the next few minutes. 51 degrees at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock upper 40s, 47 at 7, and by the time the polls close, it will be 46 degrees. Across the board, we've got temperatures again in the upper 40s to low 50s, 51 at City Airport, 49 in Ann Arbor, 50 the current temperature in Howell. Tomorrow, beautiful, even warmer than today with a high of 62, plenty of sunshine for you, and I want to give you a sneak peek at this temperature trend. Look at the drop as we head into the weekend. 43 Saturday, 39 the high on Sunday. I'll have more on that coming up in the forecast in just a few minutes.